Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans. Welcome to The Bunker. It's time for another voicemail. Today's voicemail is from an anonymous caller. Let's listen to what they have to say. Hi, Lloyd. Um, feel free to use this on your channel. Um, I would like to remain anonymous, though. Um, I am physically in, mentally out, PMO. And I have a peeny husband. No one, including my husband, knows that I am PMO yet. My question and, and problem is, my husband knows a lot about cults. Um, just something of interest to him. He listens to podcasts about them. He's watched documentaries about them. And we talk about it sometimes. And when it came up most recently, um, he indicated that the number one identifier of a cult is that it has one single leader and that you will find that with any cult and any criteria for determining a cult. And I tried to reason with him that that's not necessarily true um, without saying too much, of course, uh, and he just wasn't having it. He believes that if it's got more than one leader, it is simply not a cult. And maybe that's a defense mechanism in his mind. I don't know. Um, but what resources um, could I maybe point him to, to show him that having a single leader isn't the only thing that matters. Um, I, I did point him to the bite model. I did point him to uh, Lifton's criteria as well. Um, he found some, some value to both. Um, but how can I get it in his mind maybe or at least open his mind a little to if it meets all the criteria of a cult but it happens to have more than one leader that doesn't mean it's not a cult um anyway thank you for all that you do um you have been invaluable in my waking up process so thank you so much well thank you so much for that very interesting voicemail. I don't envy your situation. I can imagine it must be incredibly stressful to wake up and be in a situation where your spouse hasn't woken up, won't wake up, won't entertain the thought that they're in a cult. I can imagine there may have been some difficult conversations and indeed may well be more difficult conversations waiting for you in the future. It's a horrible situation to go through. I've sort of been through it a bit myself because I woke up slightly before my wife woke up and I can remember it being incredibly stressful. I think I had I didn't get diagnosed, but I think I had something approaching a nervous breakdown because I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know whether I would be getting a divorce. Oh, it was a real hellish situation to be in. So I don't envy you, but it sounds like you are in a position where there's an open line of communication with your husband. Communication is always important. When you have communication... There is a basis for making headway. And it sounds like the communication is very fruitful in terms of you talking on the level of what is or isn't a cult. That's quite an advanced level of conversation. Lots of people who are trying to reason with believing Jehovah's Witness friends and relatives would love to be at that point where, oh, now we're talking about what is or isn't a cult, and by the way, here's the bite model, and that's incredibly advanced. So give yourself a huge pat on the back for getting that far. I think with your husband's objection, 
he well there's an elephant in the room here isn't there <laughs> which I think needs to be kind of drawn to his attention, of course he's going to hang on this very precise definition of a cult being centred around a leader if he is following an organisation that is often accused of being a cult that has multiple leaders. Isn't it a little bit convenient that he is fixating on this notion of, oh, it can't be a cult if there's more than one leader, given his predicament. I think it's useful to point out the elephant in the room. Do you not think you might be a little bit biased <laughs> because you're a follower of an organisation that has multiple leaders, eight? So it doesn't have one, it has eight currently your husband is apparently appealing to the strict definition of the word cult if i go on google and look up the definition of cult it says under definition one a system of religious veneration and devotion directed towards a particular figure or object figure in the singular obviously so it's not really giving much latitude for any other type of cult where there is more than one leader i think that's kind of an unfortunate very narrow interpretation of what a cult is and to be honest if i were in your husband's shoes Rather than hanging everything on a dictionary definition, I'd be listening to what the experts have to say. What do cult experts have to say about what is or isn't a cult? I guess in your shoes, I would be making that point. I would be, again, pointing out the elephant in the room and asking, you know, do you not think you might be a little bit biased here? But I would also be interested in just having like a thought experiment with your husband and saying, OK, let's say what you're saying is true. Let's say it's a cult if there's only one leader. So let's imagine a cult with one leader. It has really abusive practices. Its members are suffering its members are deprived of their autonomy. They are deprived of the ability to think for themselves. They're totally dependent on their leader for direction in every aspect of their lives. Families are being torn apart because there is shunning. <laughs> you could go really close to the wire in describing what Jehovah's Witnesses do. You could say this leader is interfering with people's medical decisions and telling them that they shouldn't get certain forms of medical treatment. It's horrendous. Watch him squirm a little bit. And it's one leader. But then, you might say, a second leader comes in who this leader meets. Let's say he falls in love with a woman and he marries someone and they decide that together they will both jointly lead this cult. And because there are now two leaders, a husband and a wife, suddenly it's not a cult anymore. <laughs> I would just have this thought experiment, because if what he's saying is true, then it should be possible for a cult to suddenly stop being a cult just because two people decide to split power. And there could be any number of reasons why a cult leader might agree to sharing power with someone else, especially if it frees them up in terms of liability, especially if it evens the workload. There could be any number of reasons why a cult leader might decide to start sharing power. Does it really make sense that a cult stops being a cult just because someone else is involved in the leadership? And if it does make sense, if you're really sure about this, can you explain how that would work? 
in the situation I've described for you, in the hypothetical scenario I've just walked you through, explain to me how it would stop being a cult just because someone else is involved. So <laughs> rather than pointing you to resources, it sounds like you already know all the resources. It sounds like you're very well informed in what cults are. I think this is just a case of your husband being in denial and falling back on some really, really bad reasoning in defense of the obvious, <laughs> which is that the group he's following is a cult. He's just consoling himself, it seems, with the thought, oh, Jehovah's Witnesses can't be a cult because there isn't a single leader, there's eight leaders. Just preposterous. And there are any number of examples when you study cults of where power is shared and it's every bit as damaging and abusive and controlling, irrespective of how many people are in charge, how many people are leaders. So hopefully just that thought experiment and just maybe a little bit calling out the elephant in the room will help. But ultimately, I should stress, it's your husband's journey to go on and there are no guarantees. Just because you've woken up doesn't mean your husband's going to wake up. Your husband has his own journey to go on and it might be that he is nowhere near confronting these awkward truths but it's very promising that you have the lines of communication open and you're able to speak on this level. And I certainly wish you all the very best of luck. So that's all I have to say on that. If you would like to leave a voicemail, the thing to do is go to speakpipe.com forward slash cedars, remembering to indicate clearly if you don't want me to broadcast your message. But that's all I have time for. Thank you so much for watching.